Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Advantage Survival Podcast. I'm your host, Les Baker, and this is episode number 20. And today, we're going to build your lights out, kid. So stay tuned. Well, as predicted in the last episode, we did suffer a power outage when that windstorm blew through. It was for actually about an hour and seven minutes. It wasn't too bad. But the point was, right when I got the generator going, just because the game was on, you know, the football game, you know, we had to have the power so the TV would work. And as soon as I hooked it all up, the power came back on. Life is good. Life goes on. And we were prepared. So that said, let's get into today's main topic this was the hardest place for me to start prepping, you know, building a lights out kit. So one of the biggest problems I had was trying to come up with a name that made sense. I mean, we all hear on the TV when the government puts out the commercial, it says, you know, be prepared, prepared.org, whatever it is, uh, you know, make sure you have a 72 hour kit. So, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, 72 hour kit, that's what I need. You know, something happens, I've got a 72 hour kit, but that name just didn't sit well with me. And the reason it didn't sit well with me is because I needed to be prepared more than 72 hours. It was kind of like search and rescue. In search and rescue, we had a fast pack. You know, it was something that was lightweight, down and dirty. We could go on a search and rescue mission and knock it out uh, pretty quickly. Very lightweight, uh, very rapid response type of kit or backpack uh, gear system. Then there was the 24-hour pack, the 48-hour pack, the 72-hour pack, and it kind of stopped there. The 72-hour kit just didn't, you know, sit well with me. So what else do I call it? Do I call it an emergency kit? Yeah, it doesn't have a real great ring to it. I didn't like emergency kit, and I'm sure there's some other names out there, but what I settled on was lights out kit. Power goes out, something happens, lights out kit. You know, my family knows what to grab first in that type of situation. As email is flashing on my screen here, sorry about that. But my philosophy of use, you know, my lights out kit is my first line of defense in a disaster or survival scenario. Like I said, it's going to be the first thing that I go to when the power goes out or there's an earthquake, something. You know, of course, if I'm home, it needed to be mobile. It needed to be, you know, small enough where if I needed to bug out, I can take this thing with me. It also needed to be large enough to hold most of my urban survival or urban system of survival items in it. You know, it needed to you know, maintain my family for 72 plus hours. And again, more than 72. I really think that number is uh, is skewed just from looking at, you know, the response time of help during Sandy and Katrina, you know, pick your disaster. But I think it needs to be 72 hours it just isn't long enough. Uh, it needs to be a week or better. But anyway, that said, let me tell you what my kit is not. It's not part of my long-term sustainable preps. It's not something that I'm going to depend on for, you know, a battery or something, you know, long-term, uh, you know, a month, two, three, four, or a year or longer, you know, whatever it might be. I need to have more sustainable prep items to take care of myself and my family in, in those long-term situations. And I'll tell you, and this may be cruel, uh, take it the way you want it, but it was not and is not designed to help friends, family, and neighbors. I, I preach Advantage Survival a lot uh, to my family, my friends, and I talk to my neighbors a little bit about it. And I'm working on building you know, more community with my neighbors. You know, that said, I can only say be prepared so much. And hopefully, you know, they're tuning into the podcast and they're listening and they're learning and, you know, they're getting more prepared to help my community out in uh, in a situation but it's lights out kit isn't something that's designed for that it's designed to help the immediate family get through a, a situation next came a series of questions that I asked myself you know how big does it need to be it needs to be the size you know that kind of fits the needs of my family uh, another question I asked is what do I use for a container for this thing do I put it in a big duffel bag you know a lot of people do do I put it in some type of, uh, you know, Tupperware, tote, Rubbermaid thing? You know, maybe. It kind of made sense to me. And I'll tell you what I settled on. 
I went to Costco and picked up the black totes with the yellow tops. And, you know, I think they're, I want to, I want to say they're 27 gallon totes, but you know, it made sense to me. They were not too big. They weren't too small. I could put a lot of gear items. They were stackable. I could label them pretty easily. Kind of made sense. And if I needed to get out of here in a hurry, bug out, you know, I can always grab those totes, throw them in the back of the, the truck and, and go. It made sense for me to use totes. And totes were great for gear items, but I wanted something that I could store food items in and make sure that they were going to be protected from, you know, whatever, rodents, bugs, oxygen, you name it. I wanted to make sure some down and dirty food items were safe and secure. So what I decided on getting in addition to the totes were some five-gallon food grade buckets down at my local box store. I picked up, uh, I don't know, two or three of those buckets, and I also picked up some gamma lids, they're a, uh, a lid ring system that you put onto the five gallon bucket and the lid screws on and you can unscrew it, access the buckets anytime you want. And inside those buckets I put, you know, the mountain house, the, the quick backpacking type food in those buckets and it helped me store those items pretty easily. I also used one of the buckets for part of my sanitation system, which we'll get into later. That's it. What do I use for a container? Those are it. Five gallon buckets and Costco totes. The next thing is, where do I store it? Where am I going to put these things that are going to be easily accessible by me and my family in a, in a situation where the lights go out or, or whatever the disaster may be? I decided that, you know, storing these things needed to be in a place that made sense. I put them in my pantry. I can get to them really quickly. If there's an earthquake and things kind of rattle around, fall down, whatever, I can still access these totes without having to, say, get into my garage, which is a disaster, by the way. Uh, trying to get in there and find something might be difficult until I hit that spring cleaning time, which, you know, brings up another fact, decluttering, you know, when you're searching for those items that you already have, decluttering is not a bad thing to do. And, you know, my garage is certainly a place that, uh, that you know, I've started in. All right, the next thing is, can I move it easily or can anybody in my family move it easily? Is it too big or too heavy that, you know, my son couldn't lift it or drag it around? Now, I'll tell you, the totes are kind of heavy. He might have a tough time dragging them around, but, you know, certainly he can access them without having to move them too terribly far. You know, size does matter. I think, you know, weight matters. I think it's really important that your lights out kit doubles as a bug out bag also. You know, being lightweight, being able to throw it in the back of a vehicle and tear out of there in a hurry if you had to is, is a very important thing. Okay, so let's get started building the kit. Now, a couple of things. I'm going to put uh, the list of kit items that I have in the show notes. I'm also putting together a PDF that will be a free download on my site. As soon as I get that done, I'll get it up there and let folks know. Also, keep in mind, as I list through the items that are in my kit, for operational security reasons, I'm not going to give you all of the information and items that I have in my kit, but I'm going to give you a pretty good rundown of the items that I do have. Also, keep in mind, as I work on the book and I start putting chapters of the new uh, prepping book up on the website, um, you know, you'll certainly have access to the list of those items there as well. So let's get started. Let's build the lights out kit. Top of the box. First thing you see when you open up the kit is you're going to find a list of the inventory items. I'm going to list out everything that's in the kit. They're going to be right on top. Uh, they're written in, uh, right in the rain paper. So, you know, if they get wet, they're going to last a little longer than, you know, regular paper. Also, you're going to find a list of location items. These are items that are not necessarily in my kit, but they're items that are scattered throughout the house, uh, and in other locations that, you know, here's a list of items, things, where they're at. So, you know, also in that packet is going to be a generator setup instruction list. So my family can grab that. They'll know how to set the generator up and get it running when the power goes out and they need to if I'm not around. And also other instruction items or other instructions for kit items that are that are inside the uh, Lights Out kit. So that said, let's get started now. Safe drinking water. This is going to be chapter four in the book. And here's a list of the items that I have in my kit that pertain to safe drinking water. I have a Sawyer Squeeze water filter system. It's the 0.1 system. It's the uh, not the Sawyer Mini, but the Sawyer Squeeze. 
It's inside the kit. I also keep Sawyer Squeeze water filters in my bug out bags in the vehicles or my get home bags in the vehicles, uh, just so you know. It's a great water purification system down and dirty if I need it. I can filter rainwater, stream water, whatever. I also have a Sawyer 0.2 purifier bucket system. Now this is for a little longer term survival, but you know it's a great purifying uh, water purifying system. It takes out diseases, you know, all the nasty stuff in the water as well. Now, the Sawyer water systems are amazing in my mind because they filter over a million gallons of water each. So definitely something to have in your kit. Another backup is uh, chlorine dioxide water treatment tablets. Um, I keep those. They're left over from you know, my lightweight backpacking uh, days. And certainly my fast pack search and rescue days. Great way to treat water. I also have a small hand pump that... I can use in those blue five gallon water jugs that you buy at Walmart or you know wherever your water supply service you know they bring the five gallon jug out you set it on top of the deal and you got your little spouts you can get hot or cold water from I have a hand pump so I can use that to get water out of those jugs if I don't have that type of system I also keep a four-way silcock water key in there if you're not familiar with what a silcock water key is uh, just search YouTube for it. You'll see a great, uh, some great videos there on you know what they are and how to use them. But in a nutshell, they're used for accessing commercial hose bibs on the side of commercial buildings. This tool will open up the uh, the door. It'll turn you know because they don't have handles on them. You know you'll be able to uh, you know turn the valve, get water out of those things if you need to. So those are the items that are in my uh, safe drinking water portion of my lights out kit. Next up, this will be chapter five. This is a list of the food and cooking items that I have uh, inside my lights out kit. And remember, my kit has totes and five gallon buckets. I keep the food item in the food grade five gallon buckets with gamma lids. All right, I have mountain house meals for five people for five days. That's probably not enough, and I'm working on it. I want to build that up so I have more food. Uh, and, and again, the great thing about the five gallon buckets and the totes is I can grab them throw them in the back of the car, the truck, and I can cruise out of here in a hurry if I need to. I also have coffee, instant coffee. I love Medaglio Doro. I think that's how you pronounce it. I love that instant coffee. It's great stuff. I also have some tea. I keep assorted spices, salt, pepper, sugar, those kinds of things. Sugar is really important to have because it will help you when you need to create a rehydration uh, solution, a rehydration therapy solution. We'll talk about that later as well. I keep some hard candy in there. I love the Werther's uh, hard candy. It's great to suck on. Gives you some sugar. I keep a backpacking stove in there. It's an MSR pocket rocket. I keep six extra fuel canisters with that. Um, I also have a small wood-burning backpack stove. It's called a solo stove. I made a, uh, a fun video, you'll find it on my YouTube channel, where I uh, did some ski pulk uh, pulling and uh, went up, made, uh, made some coffee. It's a great stove. It doesn't require you to have fuel. You can use whatever biomass is available to you to light and keep that stove going. Also, I have a backpacking cooking pot. I have a small percolator, coffee percolator. And I recommend everybody get a percolator and use, you know, learn how to make coffee, good cup of coffee with that. It seems like that's a lost skill these days. Um, I have a hand crank uh, can opener. It's not you know electrically powered or battery powered. It's just a hand crank can opener. It's the kind that uh, doesn't leave the sharp lids because the last thing you want to do is slice your fingers or your hand open you know in a situation where you know the grid's down, whatever, and you need to uh, not get an infection. Uh, so it's a good idea not to slice up your hands. You want to protect them a little bit, and, the, and that type of can opener is certainly helpful. I also keep a uh, wine bottle opener. Um, you know, you never know. At times get tough. You want to drink some wine. It's good to have. You want to have a bottle opener. Uh, certainly a bottle, a beer bottle type opener is another thing that you want to have in there. I have some hand sanitizer. You know, your hands are dirty. You want to clean them. Water's at a premium. Hand sanitizers might be a way to go. I also keep some paper bowls and paper cups in there. I keep plastic utensils and some camping utensils. I keep uh, some paper towels in there so uh, you know you can help clean your hands or you know mop up something that you need to. And I keep some unscented baby wipes. Those are the things that are covered in my uh, in my food and cooking kit. 
All right, let's talk about operational security. Again, I'm not going to give you everything here, uh, but I'm going to give you some of the things that I keep in here for operational security. I keep some extra uh, 9mm ammunition uh, for my, uh, for my uh, Glock 26. I also keep a couple of extra mags. I keep some shotgun shells in there for the, uh, for the blowgun. I also keep some pepper spray. I have a pocket knife, a multi-tool. I also have five pairs of leather gloves, good work gloves. Uh, I also keep a pair of safety glasses in there. I keep some dust, dust masks, some N95 uh, particle mask, dust mask, respirator type. I also keep uh, 25 sets of earplugs in there. And there's some other items in there that uh, that I keep in there as well. well. Eye protection. I guess I did cover uh, some safety glasses, but there are a few other things in the uh, in the operational security set. All right, let's move on. This will be chapter seven in the book. It's first aid and medicine. Now, medicine's really interesting. I keep a lot of the meds. I mean, you know that depending on the med, you can go longer in your expiration date. But I vacuum seal the medicine uh, packages, and I also store them in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. And I put those in a five-gallon bucket as well. So, you know, those things will last a lot longer than, you know, the normal shelf life that you have uh, noted on the packages. Anyway, first aid medicine. I keep a first aid kit. It's a large kit. It's a trauma kit. It, uh, it will treat gunshot wounds. There are some Israeli battle dressings in there that are very handy for that. Uh, and some other uh, trauma items. I keep uh, an over-the-counter medicine kit, and in that kit, you know, you got the ibuprofen, acetaminophen, um, a long list of over-the-counter medications, cold medications, those kinds of things, anti-diarrheal medication. Uh, I keep those in there. I also have some packets of oral rehydration solution. I think it's called Recover is the brand. If um, you know, I'll make a make a uh, you know a link in the show note for that. But oral rehydration is I think a really you know one of those things that is overlooked in a disaster situation certainly if you're having the flu or you've got some kind of you know bug that's causing you to uh, have diarrhea throwing up those kinds of things being able to rehydrate yourself or have a loved one rehydrate you and have the ability to do that grab the solution certainly there's some ready-made packets there but also a recipe for making your own re uh, or rehydration solution I also keep some extra family prescription uh, medicines in that kit. I'm getting old. My eyes aren't what they used to be, and I keep three extra pair of eyeglasses in there in a protective case. Uh, so I'll have those. Last thing I want to do is you know, try to operate any kind of equipment or use any kind of tool or read or whatever it might be and not being able to see that would be highly frustrating for me. I also keep some bug spray in there, some sunscreen, and again, some more hand sanitizer. All right, that kind of sums up first aid and medicine. All right, also in the Lights Out kit, I have cash, documents, and contacts. So I'm going to go through a list. It's a long list of items that I have uh, in this packet. And in the book, we'll go through uh, in a lot more detail of what items you should have and how to prepare your document and contact kit but it's really important that you have this I'm still working on this I think it's something that isn't going to uh, be finished in the immediate future but it's something to work on and it's something to start working on early you know when you can't get out and you know look for things or shop for prep items or whatever it might be if you've got some downtime you can sit down and just start going through you know your documents and your contacts and start packaging this stuff up into you know a PDF form you know getting getting you know a thumb drive uh, you know figuring out your encryption uh, figuring out you know a code that you can use when you're uh, writing this stuff out typing it out so anyway let's talk about some of the items you need to come up with a document retention and security plan you know whatever that might be we kinda just talked about that you need a document location plan you know where are these documents are they in a safety deposit box are they you know uh, in a remote location are they you know where you live where are your documents you need to know know that and you also need to have the ability to, to disseminate that information to the rest of your family also the physical document package all of these things put together you know some other thing to consider is off-site electronic 
storage. Again, we talked about safety deposit box. But here's the list. A family what to grab list. All right, so there's a list in there, page one. What do you grab? If we've got to get out of here, what are the key things we want to grab and things that most people don't think about? You know, obviously grabbing the documents, but grabbing things like uh, hard drives that you might want to grab, you know, external hard drives. Grab those things if you need them, if, you know, if that's something that is part of your backup system. I also keep $1,000 of cash in the kit in small denominations. One thing to consider is some small amounts of silver or fractional gold coins uh, you might want to keep in there. I keep a map kit of quality road maps, paper maps. They're of the state of uh, Washington where I live, also some detailed county maps, the surrounding states. There's certainly plenty of maps out there in the paper form. If power goes down or there's some type of uh, EMP that causes your electronics not to work, Having a paper map, knowing where to go, is something that you're going to want to have. Also, now I'm going to start cruising down this list. Of, this is just to get your brain working on things you need to consider to have in your document kit. Copies of your homeowner's insurance policies, life insurance policies, vehicle insurance policies, home inventory lists, photos, video inventory files, birth certificates, social security cards, immunization records, military records, family medical documents, uh, academic documents, uh, banking information, copies of credit cards front and back, investment information, precious metal investment information, business interests information, your tax return information, keeping, you know, if you're working on a budget or using some kind of spreadsheet to manage your, uh, your bills, your debts, you know, have that information available there as well along with account numbers, the institutions, the contact information for those institutions. You know, have all of that information in there. Also, legal documents such as updated will, divorce decrees, family legal history documents, etc. You want to have titles, you know, like your automobile, automobiles, your home, your other equipment that you might own, recreational items, licenses, passports, list of prescription medications, copy of phone and family contacts back those things up make sure you got uh, paper copies of them and keep this stuff updated another thing that people forget to have are uh, you know their internet passwords list of their passwords the usernames application passwords and usernames if you've got an apps system that you're using on your phones or computers or whatever and also treasured family photographs those are just some of the things to consider having in your documentation package and it's real important to uh, to package all this stuff up. It may involve taking a lot of time scanning documents, putting them in a PDF form, encrypting them, and keeping them on flash drives. Um, you know, certainly digital media is a way to go. And also keeping them in a secure format so you can store these things. All right, that's a lot. And again, I will have a list of these items in the show notes. And I'll also, you know, work on a checklist for a free download on my site. All right, so that does it for you know cash documents and contacts. Let's move on to chapter nine. What do I have for shelter and clothing? I have a tote that has uh, that's specifically labeled for this. I have a six-person family tent that's in there. I also have a 20 by 20 tarp. It's one of the standard blue tarps that uh, you know you see around. I also have 200 feet of paracord. I have 100 foot of 9 millimeter rope. I have heavy duty tent stakes. I also have five blizzard survival jackets and five blizzard survival sleeping bags in that kit. And, you know, I'm working on other items to include in the shelter and uh, clothing kit, uh, but those are certainly the shelter portion of it. The other thing is uh, in that kit are a pair of uh, hiking boot type shoes. For each member of the family, a change of clothes for each one of us. Cotton, some are outdoor type synthetic clothing, but for the most part, it's an extra change of clothes if we need it. So those are uh, the shelter and clothing items for, for Chapter 9. Next, Chapter 10, lighting. All right. Uh, <laughs> headlamp is certainly one that you want to have in there. You may have, uh, you may want more than one, but a headlamp is certainly something that you can uh, strap on the, the top of your head and have both hands free to look for items, you know, search, whatever you need to do. A headlamp is 
uh, in my opinion, one of the best ways to use artificial lighting in a, in a grid down situation. A couple flashlights, definitely something to have in the kit and some emergency candles. I think I have a bag of candles. I want to say there's at least five emergency candles in there, but there's probably more. Certainly we have candles throughout the house, but inside the kit, if we need to go, we have candles. Okay, let's move on to power, heat, cooling, and energy. This will be chapter 11 in the prepping book. Energy is something that uh, we all need. It's certainly a system of survival and part of my lights out kit includes a small Honda generator. Also, I keep extra fuel and oil and spark plugs for that generator along with an instruction manual and the owner's manual uh, for use of that generator. Uh, inside, a, uh, inside one of the totes is some extension cords, plugs, supplies for the generator, the things you might need for it. Also, key thing to have is a small container. I have like a, uh, I don't know what it's called, it's like a small case that you would keep a handgun or something in. It's plastic, you open it up. Inside that is uh, battery chargers uh, for AA, AAA batteries, which is my main platform for batteries. They're uh, Sanyo Antelope batteries. I keep a pile of those in there. I also keep you know, regular energizer batteries that are disposable. I keep a pack of AA and AAA batteries as well inside that kit. I also have a solar charger from Brunton. It's a rollout solar panel charger that I can charge, you know, those batteries up as well as, you know, charging them from the generator. I keep extra charging cords for cell phones, for, you know, other equipment that I might have. Any kind of charging system that is USB, I can plug into any one of those platforms, the batteries, packs, the solar charger, all those things kind of work together. And I'll snap a picture of that, and that might be one of the main photos for the podcast in the show notes. Just a ton of stuff in there, along with cords that you can use for your computers. And it's weird, but you know, if you have to bug out and you're somewhere, you might have your laptop, but you don't have an Ethernet cord that you can plug into somewhere else, you know, you're screwed if you're trying to access the Internet, if that's available somewhere. Also an RJ11 type uh, phone cord to use uh, with a telephone. So lots of different cords, wires, plugs, long list of those items inside the power, uh, heat, and cooling energy kit. Uh, another thing to have in that kit, and it's something that I don't keep in the totes, but I keep nearby the totes, a small electric heater that I can plug in, help keep you warm. I can run that off the generator. Uh, we also have uh, one of the small air conditioners, the window, uh, well, I guess it's not a window type unit. It's the kind of unit that you, you know, stands alone in a room and vents out of a window. We can run that off the generator if we're in conditions where it's extremely hot. We typically don't run into that type of scenario where we live, but uh, certainly the heat and having a small heater is one of the, the things that we definitely need. Also, we have a fire making kit in there, uh, tons of stuff in the fire making kit, and that's a podcast uh, alone, just of the different types of fire kit items. But you know, just know that there's cigarette lighters in there, there's fire starters in there, there's metal matches, uh, ferrocene rods, those kinds of things inside that fire kit, along with some fat wood, which uh, is is awesome to have in a fire kit. Um, I also have from an old vehicle that I had, you know, if you remember the old cigarette lighters, you, you push in the uh, cigarette lighter adapter and, you know, you shove it in there and a few seconds later it pops out, it's glowing red. Well, I have to have one of those things. I keep it in the kit. I can start a fire with it because part of the uh, power kit, the battery kit, I have uh, some cigarette lighter attachments as well. So lots of things in the power, heat, and energy kit. Just know that it's a small kit. It can be used uh, as part of the lights out kit, and it is not part of long-term sustainable power, heat, cooling, and energy. Okay, let's move on to communications and signaling. Communications and signaling, if you remember some of the news footage from Hurricane Sandy, you'll know that people were really struggling to uh, get communications. They were struggling to use their cell phones. And I, there was one picture that I, I remember seeing that, you know, somebody had power somewhere, whether it was a generator or they actually had line power. But hanging out of their front door was a power strip, and, you know, everybody was just piled uh, around that power strip trying to charge your phones. You know, and part of having that energy and power kit is, you know, being able to charge your phones. But just having phone for communication is, is key. 
Just remember that cell phones may not work in uh, you know different types of disaster scenarios. So other alternative forms of communication are important. So you know for me, number one, cell phones. You know my kids have them. I have them. It's important. We communicate. We text. We use cell phones quite a bit. But having a backup plan is certainly something that you want to have. So along with cell phones, you want to have the cell phone chargers. They're in my power uh, energy kit and keep a set of chargers there. Uh, another form of communications that we have is the uh, small handheld radios, the FRS, GMRS radios. Uh, they're pretty affordable. You can get sets that are under, you know, I think they're under 100 bucks most places. Uh, you can spend as much as you want to, uh, to pay for those type of radios, but certainly... Um, you know, having a set of those is easy uh, and, and affordable. Also, a CB radio, they make portable CB radios. Having those in uh, different vehicles is another form of communication. A ham radio, getting a ham license and uh, having ham radio is, is another form of communications that I think would be very important. I'm working on getting my ham license, so uh, it won't be long and I will have a ham radio uh, and be able to operate that radio uh, legally. Um, also in that kit, I have a hand crank radio. It's from Midland. It's, uh, it's an AM FM radio. It also, let's see, is a weather band. Uh, it does a lot of things. It has uh, a flashlight attached to it. Again, it's hand crank. It's battery operated. It can work on line power as well. And it has an FRS, GMRS uh, microphone radio within that kit as well. So it can kind of be used as a base station if needed. Uh, another form of communication to consider is uh, the marine type radios for uh, you know for boats those kinds of things you may want to consider having uh, that as backup um, also having you know uh, an old phone that you can plug into the wall without having to plug into a power cord so your power may be out but you may still have dial tone uh, you know part of having uh, a, a telephone. You know, I think most telephones work around 44 volts that are coming through that phone line, and you know that's something that uh, you know if you have a phone, you can power that phone and make phone calls if you still have phone service. Something to consider. Um, you know, I've also seen some you know LED lights that you can plug into a, a phone jack, wall jack that will give you some lighting too. So there's something to think about. I don't own one of those, but I've uh, I think I've seen it on TV. All right, so let's see, what else? Communications. Uh, I have a Spot Satellite uh, communicator. It's the Spot Connect device. I take that hiking with me, but it's also part of the kit. Um, it has uh, phone numbers, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, if there's a situation where my whole family's together uh, and we're in trouble, I can activate that Spot Satellite Messenger and get some help coming to me. So that's a form of communication that you may want to consider. I pay $100 a year for that service, and I think I paid, I don't know, 150 bucks for the device itself, but certainly a consideration. Some people also consider using uh, satellite phones. That's, uh, if you can afford it, uh, it's certainly a service that you may want to consider. I know that uh, Spot also has a satellite phone that you can get. I'll provide a link in the show notes to my affiliate uh, Amazon page there. So you can take a look at those, but they're certainly affordable, and the satellite uh, plans are affordable as well these days. So I think that uh, covers our communication portion. Okay, next up, personal hygiene. This is going to be chapter 13 in the book, and personal hygiene is just that, personal hygiene. So my kit is going to vary from your kit, but just know that uh, here are some of the items that I keep in my kit and my kit is designed around my family. So each one of us has our own specific kit within the big kit. So obviously feminine protection for the uh, the ladies of the family. Uh, shampoo. There's some camping shampoo that you can get that doesn't require water. Uh, hand sanitizer, hand soap, toothbrush, dental floss, toothpaste, uh, antiperspirant, uh, a solar shower. Uh, so you can uh, warm up some water, take a shower if you need to. Uh, certainly nail and hair cutting kits, uh, you know, items for doing that. Uh, shaving kit, uh, also uh, a couple of tubs of baby wipes. Uh, certainly there are other personal hygiene items uh, in there, but uh, those are definitely ones along with, of course, toilet paper. 
uh, are things that you're going to want to have in your personal hygiene kit. All right, let's move on. Next up, chapter 14 is going to be sanitation. And sanitation is going to be uh, a key thing. And we'll talk a lot in the book about sanitation, but I just kind of want to go over the items again that are in my lights out kit for sanitation. I have a five gallon bucket. It has a, a toilet seat lid that attaches to that five gallon bucket. And inside that five gallon bucket, I have uh, the kitchen trash bags, the plastic kitchen trash bags that uh, I think they're the tall kitchen trash bags. And I use that to line the bucket in there. You can use the, uh, the bucket and when you're done, you can wrap those uh, bags up and dispose of them as you see fit. So uh, also inside that kit are some, uh, you know, toilet paper. There's also hand sanitizer in there. There's a couple of the tubs of Costco uh, wipes that are in there. I also have a box of uh, large exam gloves uh, that you can uh, that you can use. I also have uh, three rolls of toilet paper. There's some zip ties to zip tie the bag tight if uh, that's how you want to seal it up. And uh, I think there's a pocket knife and some scissors in there as well. So. That's all in a five gallon bucket with the lid. It can go with us if we need to. We've got a place to uh, use the restroom and uh, it works out pretty well for sanitation. And there's certainly, again, some OPSEC considerations when you're dealing with uh, sanitation in long-term survival situations. And we'll go into that in the book, but that's something that we're not gonna talk about here for a lights out kit. All right, uh, again, inside the uh, a tote, we also have uh, some more toilet paper. There's some more wipes. There's some uh, Lysol wipes, you know, the kind that uh, that you can use to take care of countertops and surfaces. Kills 99.9% .9 of whatever's there. Uh, those are pretty handy. Uh, again, hand soap, exam gloves are also in the tote. Uh, I have some more of the kitchen trash bags in there. I also have some large uh, the green leaf bags that are inside the tote so we can take care of garbage. The paper plates and paper cups that we talked about, I could package those up in garbage bags and uh, dispose of them as I need to. Uh, I keep a small jug of bleach and also some of the blue uh, dog poo bags. So those are some of the items that are in my sanitation portion of my lights out kit. And now let's move on to sleeping systems. Now, sleeping systems, uh, you know, you can make it as big or small as you want. I'm tending to stay on the small side as far as packaging items go. I'm not going to have any big sleeping bags. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have large sleeping mats. I'm trying to keep my lights out kit portable again for bugging out if I need to. I'm a big fan of the Blizzard Survival products from Purs Medical. I'll provide a link in the show notes for those. Uh, that'll take you to my Amazon affiliate site where you can take a look at these items, purchase them there if you want or somewhere else or use something else if you want to. But uh, the Blizzard Survival jackets, uh, I'm sorry, the Blizzard Survival sleeping bags are uh, items that I keep in the kit. I have five of them. I also have uh, five inflatable sleeping pads uh, that I keep in there as well to get us off the ground, uh, off the floor, whatever it might be. Uh, the sleeping bags are pretty handy. They'll work in a wilderness environment as well as an urban environment, and they're certainly not something that uh, would be a long-term sleeping system, but it's something that's going to get you through a week or two or you know, even a month. I heard that uh, these things can last quite a long time if you take care of them. So that's what I'm using for a sleeping system. All right, next up, tools and hardware. All right, some of the tools and hardware that I have in my lights out kit are a, a good pair of scissors. I also keep a pry bar in there, a small pry bar. If there's an earthquake, if I need to, you know, jimmy some door jams to get through them, I have the ability to do that with a small pry bar. Also, I keep a large uh, knife, survival type knife in there. I keep a saw. It's uh, not a silky saw, which I think are some of the best saws in the world, but it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the brand. Uh, I picked it up at the local box store, but it's a small saw that can cut through wood. I also, uh, or even drywall if you need to. Uh, I have an assorted toolkit with all kinds of wrenches and screwdrivers, you know, socket sets, those kinds of things. I have a small shovel. It's like the, uh, the army trenching shovels. I have a hammer. Uh, I have a small pair of bolt cutters. Uh, those are the kind of the, the tools that I have in there. 
As far as hardware supplies go, you know, obviously duct tape. You don't want to go anywhere without that. But I have some additional rope. I have uh, a, an assortment of screws, you know, wood screws, you know, different sizes, different uh, lengths of screws. I also have uh, a bunch of different types of nails, assorted nails in there. So if I need to board up something or, you know, whatever it might be, uh, I have some type of hardware with me that I can use. And I'm sure there's other items that I can have in there, but those are the main items in the, uh, in the toolkit. So lastly, uh, as far as what's in the kit is just a list of emergency procedures and it's kind of tucked in along with the document package. Uh, these are emergency procedures as far as school and uh, you know different phone numbers and things for the power company and gas company. Uh, this will be chapter 17 in the book and we'll cover a lot of the emergency procedures uh, in the book. But just know that you want to list out some of the emergency procedures that you might need to deal with uh, depending on your situation. All right, this podcast is rolling on long. I think that's going to wrap up uh, most of the items that I keep in my lights out kit, and hopefully it you know, gets you thinking about the items you should have in your lights out kit. If you have some items that I may have missed or you think I should consider keeping in my kit, shoot me an email or, or hit me on Facebook, uh, whatever. But uh, definitely take the time, put together your lights out kit. I think it's really important that you have one. It makes you more prepared than the 72 hours that uh, that they say you should have uh, as far as uh, you know, an emergency kit. All right, that does it for today's show. If you have any survival or prepping questions you'd like answered on the air, go to AdvantageSurvival.com and click on the red Send a Voicemail tab on the right side of the page to leave me a 90-second voicemail message that I may use in a future show. Don't forget to like our Facebook page, and please support the show by rating and reviewing on iTunes. You can also support the show by purchasing your survival and prepping gear at asgearshop.com. And lastly, check out my new ebook, Surviving a Day Hike All Night, on Amazon. You'll get great insights and stories of my search and rescue adventures and learn all about Surviving a Day Hike All Night. Thanks for listening, and as we learn how to survive and thrive together in this increasingly manic world, stay frosty, my friends.